Don't you love it when you meet someone and you just feel like you met a kindred spirit? That is exactly how I felt when I met Faith Jenkins. You might know her as Judge Faith. You've seen her as the judge of divorce court. And she actually recently moved over to run her own production company and is now executive producer of a hit show on Oxygen called Killer Relationships. And in this interview, Faith and I talk about her decisions of choosing to go back to law school after being first runner up at Miss America, instead of doing what so many other people would have done, which is capitalize on that moment, the fame, the exposure, and you know what? That exposure would have been fleeting for her. She has an incredible career as an analyst. You see her on CNN and many other major networks. But you know what else is really exciting? The fact that she found love and she didn't do it in the timeline that everyone else thought she should. And she has a book out called Sis Don't Settle, How to Stay Smart in Matters of the Heart. And we talk a lot about how she met Kenny, Kenny Lattimore is a good friend of my husband and I, and her journey to getting married later in life, really overcoming the stigma of being a successful um, attorney and a successful in her career and being single. And what were some of the things that she learned? This was such an incredible interview. Faith has such a beautiful heart and she really is going to open your eyes to, you know, really deciding for you what path is right for you in love and in life. So get ready for a very inspired living interview with Faith Jenkins. All right, Faith, I have to tell you, I've been so excited to have you on the show because we have a lot in common actually and sis don't settle. I mean, come on, who does not need to read that book, which we're <laughs> gonna talk about here in a little bit. So thank you for joining me. Thank you, Carrie. Really excited to be with you. Been looking forward to this a long time, so I'm really excited. To chat. <laughs> long time coming. Two two busy women trying to get them on on the calendar, yeah. but we did it, Faith. We did it. And you know, here's what's so life. funny. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, no, you're fine. Um, when I first met you, um, I was like, okay, she looks really familiar. And you know how you just meet someone and you just feel like there's there's an energetic connection. You know, like we don't know each other that well, but man, if we had a night together and a glass of wine, like what we would probably talk about. And then going into your background, I saw that you were first runner up to Miss America in 2001. And I was one of the coaches, actually the director for Miss Oregon, the only Miss America from Oregon in 2002. So it was just such a crazy small world that you're from the Miss America system and yeah. that you participated and you won all like three awards which they give at Miss America which for someone who doesn't compete they're like Carrie why does this matter <laughs> because <laughs> it doesn't happen it doesn't happen you win swimsuit talent and community service so yeah. you got a lot going for you Faith it, it was it was pretty rare but you know I and I, I feel like we probably crossed paths and just don't remember because we were there at the same time for sure because yeah. I went back the next year after yeah. I competed and it was one of the only two times that uh, I went back to the pageant so I feel like we probably did cross paths I mean it was a while ago now but I think it's that, been a minute <laughs> that is so awesome though that you were so you the director of yeah the I competed myself never got to Miss America but you know what I will say for people who have the stereotype, you know, of pageant girls, I feel like that system did so much for me as a young woman and just instilling great confidence and poise and, you know, communication skills that you don't get in school, you know. No, it shaped so much of, it's, at that young age, it shaped so much of my foundational just experience in terms of public speaking, meeting people, being able to interact and dialogue with people from all different backgrounds, all walks of life, because you were exposed to so much. So yeah. uh, and for me, and then it just the scholarship alone paid for my education. So it was a great program for me to get involved in as a as a young woman. I'm sure you you probably feel the same way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I ran Miss Portland for a while, but it's just, yeah, it's so funny how it just opens up so many doors and I'm sure it opened up some doors for you as well. So, you know, you're known as Judge Faith. 
-hmm. right? You've built an incredible career around, you know, your, your prosecuting background and, you know, being on divorce court and now owning your own production company and the host of killer relationships. I and mean, we have so much to talk about faith. So take me back, take me back to Louisiana, take me back to, did you always know that you wanted to be an attorney? And what do you think it was? Because so much of what we talk about at Inspired Living Faith is taking people who are really good at what they do. And a lot of people would love to be in a place like yours where they're hosting a show or they get known you know, for the expertise that they bring to the marketplace. So give me a little bit more of your background. And was it Miss America that opened those doors for you as far as getting you on camera more? Like, give me, give me a little bit of, of that background. I, I love that question because I have a lot of pageant friends. I live in Los Angeles now, and I have a lot of pageant friends that uh, that I competed with who came to L.A. or moved to New York afterward after competing because they were interested in the, in the field of entertainment. Yeah. And for me, I'd gone to law school when I won Miss Louisiana and competed at Miss America. I was already in law school, so I took a year off from school. And I remember afterwards people telling me, I said, I was going to go back. They said, what are you going to do next? Well, I'm going to go back and finish school and get my degree because I have all of this scholarship money. And if I don't go back to school, I lose it. Right. And, so the, and, really quickly, just so for, for our friends who don't know, Miss America is a scholarship based mm -hmm. pageant, right? So you, you're competing for scholarship money and it's incredible what it's done for women and helping them fund their education. So you had, especially being first runner up to Miss America, like you, you received some really great scholarship money that you had to use. I had won a chunk of money. And if you don't use it within a certain time frame or start using it, then you forfeit it back to the organization. So I remember finishing my year and I had this whirlwind year. I was traveling everywhere and I'd been first runner up to Miss America. So a lot of my appearances were national appearances even and not mm -hmm. state in Louisiana. And I remember at the end of my year, people saying, well, what are you doing next? Because they would see me on TV. They would see me you know, doing all of these amazing things, meeting people, interviewing people. And I said, well, I'm going back to school. <laughs> and people were like, really? You're going to go what? back to school? Yeah. Like, all of what are you doing? Activities? And I said, yeah, but this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an attorney. I wanted to get this, this education. And now I have the opportunity to do it and graduate debt-free. Isn't yeah. that great? So I went back. I didn't take, I took that year off because I had to fulfill my obligations. But then I went right back that next year. And for me, it was really the best decision career-wise I made because after I graduated and I moved to New York, I took a a real job as an attorney working in New York, working for a big law firm. Then I went to the prosecutor's office prosecuting cases. I didn't do television for eight years into my wow. practice. So, um, so for eight years, I just got this amazing experience, this amazing uh, work exposure in New York. I was working for one of the biggest firms and then one of the best prosecutor's offices in the country. And that experience is what opened up so many doors for me to move to the next level and work mm -hmm. on television and entertainment. So it was this deferred path for me. Yeah. And when I talked to a, a couple of my girlfriends who competed in the pageant and they moved right to LA and pursue the path of television and entertainment. They talk about how it was so much harder for them because they would show up in rooms and they said there were 15 other girls. Who exactly. Just How do I stand out. What do I do? And that's when I realized, wow, you pursue your, your purpose and you pursue your passion because eventually those doors will open for you when you are pursuing what you really authentically want to do and not someone else's path or vision of what they see for your life so Faith, oh my i just have to stop you for a second i am so in love with this conversation because it would have been so easy for you to take that momentum right take that publicity and do what everyone else does and and move to la like pursue the tv stuff but instead you went back to law school and you didn't really start getting exposure until eight years in this marketplace especially right now i mean that was you know some time ago and that was such an incredible decision but even more so now faith like if you're not pursuing your passion if you're not known for something if you don't have a skill set and an expertise that allows you to stand out you are one of everyone 
right? Because everyone wants the Insta fame, but I guarantee you the longevity that you have created in your life because of your expertise, because of your experience, because of who Faith is and, and your passion, like you're gonna have such a longer career than if you made the choice to take advantage of the the fame or the celebrity that you had at the time. Does that make sense? Like I just I think this is really important for someone to hear right now because they want the exposure, but it's taking the time to really become the person that can leverage that exposure, right? And handle that exposure and stand out with that exposure, which you've done so incredibly well. So so for me, I was able to take all of this real life experience and and, and, and build on it. My first job on TV was a legal analyst analyzing high profile trials and cases. And from that, I got a call about doing a court show, which I never thought about. I, I've watched them on TV, but it was not something that right. I really considered doing. And then everything just built from there. But I will tell you, it was my career path. It was going back to school in that moment and, and actually practicing law, getting the experience that opened up all of these doors in television later down the road. So it was this, it was either I pay now or pay later. And yeah. I just chose in that moment to make this sacrifice, go back to school. And, and I would, when I moved to New York, I was working for a big law firm, but it wasn't a glamorous job. I was sleeping in my office some nights working all I worked three months in a row without a day off just grinding in this firm yeah. it, it was really difficult I was in the trenches I was doing you know these these crazy cases in Manhattan prosecuting cases so it was just a everybody's journey is so different but for mm -hmm. me what made the big difference for me was deciding that I had this vision and this purpose for my life and I knew that pursuing law was had to be a part of it and not abandoning it, abandoning that um, at the first sign of something shiny dangling, uh, for, you know, in the corner of my eye, you know, someone in, and other people saying that you should pursue this because it was so much more glamorous at the time than going back sure. to being in my books for eight hours a day. Yeah, that is so interesting. And what an in insightful decision to make at that time in your life. Um, and that has led you again to hosting these amazing shows. And let's talk about, you know, you were judge faith, you still are, right? But now you've really moved into taking ownership and creating your own outlets, right? Starting your own production company, executive producer of killer relationships. What was that like for you? What was the, what was that aha moment that you were like, you know what, I'm going to move on from divorce court. And I'm going to go in and because it's it's one of the highest rated shows on Oxygen. I can't wait to watch it. So but give me the background because that's a big step from going from kind of talent, mm -hmm. even though I, I always I always disliked it when people called me talent. I'm like, I'm so much more than that. Don't call me that. Um, but to really, you know, having your own production company and executive producing this new show. Talk to me about that. It was about ownership for me. Mm -hmm. and not just being hired to work on a project, but actually having ownership and um, decision-making skills and wanting to add my voice to the mix of what you see on television. Mm -hmm. um, if, you know, a lot of these shows, you, you look at what's on TV and what's being greenlit and what's being created and the people behind it, and a lot of it stems from whoever is has the has access to certain networks people. and yeah. certain people and so <laughs> it's who you know yes you know and i was in you know i started looking at what the con the type of content that i wanted to produce i wanted to produce content that i was proud of that yeah. uh, i could get behind i wanted to uh, really just be a part of what was being created, what people were watching, how people were being entertained in another way and step into a space of, of ownership. So now going forward for me, I would not be a part of another show unless I am an executive producer on the show or unless I have created it or, or, or something of that nature um, just because of my experience in in hosting 
and being the face of something, you always want to uh, be proud and happy of the content that you are putting mm -hmm. out there. So that became, yeah, and and when you're in that other position, you really don't have the choice, right? Like, you really I'm just have to follow that. through with what the network wants. Mm -hmm. And so that was very important to me, and just being a part of the genre. Yeah, having a voice in the genre was very important to me, and finding other talented people. It's not just about me. I'm not just producing TV for me. My job now is to find other really talented, smart, dynamic people and present them and create ideas and content for them to uh, develop TV around. So mm -hmm. it's just a, a, a new space that I have entered into something that uh, I'm, I'm really passionate about. And it was sort of a natural progression for me. Yeah. Well, congratulations. What have been some of the like big learnings you've learned so far? Because you know, Faith, when you start something like you start a business or you start down this path and it looks so amazing and then you start actually doing the work and you're like, wow, I didn't know this. So I didn't realize this. What have been some of the lessons that you've learned so far in just creating your own content and getting it, you know, on a network like Oxygen? I think being confident in your ideas. Mm. and um, being confident in your perspective and what you have to offer. Because I think that's a really important uh, part of it all is bringing different perspectives into the different genres of TV. Um, also, it's a, it's a competitive space because there are, <laughs> I think that you know, streamers have really opened up doors for a lot more content to be produced. Yeah. When you look at linear cable, you're looking at time slots. Yeah. You know, there are only so many time slots that they have to fill. And so everyone is competing to be a part of this time slot. And people want the best time slot because it makes a difference in the success of the ratings of your show and all of those things. So just, just learning about all of that. But going back to what I learned in pageants when I started competing, and that is to run your own race. And mm. you, you're always striving not to be better than anyone else, but being the best that you can and knowing that your best is, is good enough. And you know what? Sometimes you just have to be proud and happy that you're, you're in the room. You know, that's, that's <laughs> right. the first step. <laughs> produces, you're in the room. Yes. So, uh, so, so just going with that and just having that mindset of my goal is to be better than I was yesterday. My goal is continue to learn. My goal is continue to grow and just continue to put my best uh, work forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we have to remember that because as women um, who are driven and ambitious, it also is easy to look at other women and start to question you know, your timing, which we're going to talk about in a minute, your your role, like how things are unfolding in the perfect time that is uniquely your own. And Faith, I think that especially when it comes to visibility and social media and streaming, it is really easy for a woman of any color or any background to say, you know what, I there's too, there's too much competition or you know, it's too late for me, or it's too early for me, or I'm too this, or I'm too that. Do you ever, do you ever have those internal conversations? Or do you feel like you've done so much work, you know, getting to this place that you're now really owning it? Um, I feel that, um, I feel that every step along this process that I'm in in life, and it, it took me a while to get to this place, both personally and professionally, is um, a present moment to enjoy. Mm. Because we're always going to be working. And it's, you, know, you talk about us being ambitious and driven and goal-oriented. I think that all of, of those things are important and it gives us um, motivation. To, when we get up and we start our day, we have our list, our things we want to accomplish. <laughs> But we can't be addicted to striving for the next thing because then your life just becomes this hamster wheel yeah. of um, always searching for more. There's always mm -hmm. something else just right outside of your grasp. And if you're not careful, then you're not enjoying this present moment. This, this, yeah. this thing that you wanted, that you have now, you're not in a state of appreciation of it. Yeah, so, I, I think that's so, so true. And the days just start running 
so fast. You know, they go by so fast because you're not mindful of the moments that you're living because you're always looking at what you want to achieve next. So I love that faith. There really is kind of this, you know, dichotomy, this line between having the vision, but living in the moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that, and that's so important. And that's something that I've had to constantly remind myself as yeah. I've gone through my career is to enjoy every step of the process. Yeah. Because in, in every accomplishment along the way. Absolutely. Um, because we can just keep thriving for the next one and we don't appreciate the one that we have. And you've had so many accomplishments you know, um, professionally. Let's talk about your greatest accomplishment um, personally, um, which is you married good old Kenny Lattimore. Um, for those of you who don't know, my husband, Michael, and Kenny are dear friends. They have toured together and played together. Kenny's voice, when he sang at my wedding, I'm like, that's it, I'm done. Like, <laughs> I'll go back and listen a million times. You so much every time. It was awesome. Oh, Faith, it was so amazing. It was so great to have you there. Um, and I also love seeing you and Kenny together. I mean, when you see the two of you, it just really does look like a match made in heaven. And I know it was, it took a minute for you to get there. And what I loved in reading your background and reading the intro to the book is, you know, we start feeling this pressure that society puts on us mm -hmm. that why aren't you married already? I mean, I didn't get, as you know, we married to Michael until I was in my mid forties. Mm -hmm. And previously I was married young. So I really wanted to make sure that when I did it again, right? That I didn't settle, that it was that match. And so let's talk about your book, yes. Sis, Don't Settle, um, how, to, how to Stay Smart in Matters of the Heart. Now, no matter where you are in your life right now, whether you're in relationship, whether you're single, whether you are swiping left or right, you know, I think that strong women sometimes can feel like they're really great in business, but maybe they're not so great in love. Um, and it's always, again, kind of this, well, I can't have one. I have to I have to kind of choose. So Faith, give me your story, give us the background and tell me why you wrote this book because there's a lot of relationship books on the market. This book was a really important, pro was a really important project for me because um, when I moved to New York and I started working as, as an attorney, I thought, okay, I'm, I'm living my life, I'm adulting. In the greatest <laughs> world, I have my apartment on the Upper East Side. Obviously, now it's time for me to be my husband. You know, I have my job. I finished school. That's and, right. Uh, that didn't happen in the time frame that I thought it would. And I dated for 15 years. <laughs> and so <laughs> I went through, I mean. So it, there's you know, lots of happened. stories there. Lots of stories, <laughs> lots of relationships, lots of questions from outsiders because people would see me achieving professionally and in my career, but not married um, and didn't have children. And so I would get a lot of questions about why I was still single, what was going on in my personal life. And I just found as I got older, 35 years old, I mean, I go home for the holidays and I remember uh, walking into uh, a, a family friend's home and someone being there. And the first thing she asked me was, well, I don't understand. Why aren't you married? Like, where's your husband? <laughs> and isn't it know, funny though? Isn't that funny that as society, we just, we can't help but put that pressure on someone. <laughs> like, why is that? I always yeah. said that that says more about the people asking than it ever said about. Ooh. Yeah. Because, you know, this, this notion that somehow I was, something was missing in my life. We're not complete, right? Without that. Not complete, yeah. that something mm -hmm. was off, something was wrong. And I was, I remember being asked that and feeling embarrassed because I was put on the spot in that moment and I didn't know what to say. I knew what the answer was. For me, my journey was different from a lot of yeah. other people in, in Louisiana where I grew up. A lot of my friends sure. got very young and, and they had kids and I had a different path. But what was so important for me to talk about in the book was it was okay to have a different path. We're not, we can't all be doing the same things at the same time. Number one, it's okay to make a choice if you don't want to marry. There was a long time where I knew I was not ready. Yeah. I knew that I did not have the skill set that I needed to be married. What so so people are asking me because you want to like photos on Instagram, but it's a, a real life that you have to live. <laughs> 
right? <laughs> yeah. so, Those likes are going to sustain you. I'll tell you sustain that. You. Yeah. Oh, okay, look cute. So I had to embrace my own path, my own journey, and and just get used to ignoring the noise. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't going to be embarrassed. I wasn't going to defend my singleness. I wasn't going to feel all this pressure <laughs> to explain myself. I was going to live my life. And the second thing was I was actually going to live and be happy as a single person. If I had waited, because I got married after I turned 40 years old, if I had waited to really live, yes. go to all my favorite restaurants, travel and do all of those things, I would have spent half my life waiting and, and just merely existing instead of really living and being happy in mm -hmm. my own path. So oh, I feel that so much. Yes. I just really feel someone needs to hear that right now that, you know what, your path is not someone else's. You're on your own and to find joy now, mm -hmm. right? To live life now, to go to your favorite restaurants, to travel, to do the things. And much like you, Faith, I felt like I lived a whole lot of life um, before. I met Michael and now, you know, we have a relationship where we get to really enjoy life together, but I wasn't waiting for someone to complete me or to make me feel worthy, yes. right? It was like making sure that you feel that on your own. So you attract that right person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I just, you know, when I wrote the book, I wrote it after I met my husband, right after we got married, because I said for a woman who dated in, in my twenties and in my thirties as a professional woman, I knew that yeah. there were so many other women mm -hmm. like there out there like me, who uh, there were so many lessons that I learned, Carrie, that I wanted to share in the book, because I also thought so many things I learned through trial and error in dating, because I didn't really have anyone to teach me, or mm -hmm. I didn't have these huge standards for love in my life. So a lot of things I learned just by making these mistakes and falling down and getting back up again and trying again. And I wanted to share about those experiences. Some of them were, some of them were funny. Some of you could laugh, you know, identify with some others might make you cry, but it was all about this journey in my life that got me to the point where when I did meet my husband, first of all, I knew what I liked and I knew what I did not like with, which mm -hmm. was just as important. Yes. I knew what I was willing to compromise on. And I knew the things that I was not willing to compromise on, which was just as important. So when I made the decision to get married, I was so grounded in knowing who I mm. was and what I had to offer and what I was bringing and also what I wanted someone else to show up as and bring yeah. and tribute and add because it's all about adding. Mm -hmm. No one's making you happy because you can't give your power away like that. That's right. They can yep. make you happy. They can make you sad. They can make you happy. They can make you depressed. So someone who is going to add <laughs> you know, joy and happiness and all of those things. And we, and we all go through difficult times, but I'm talking about just an overall being of who yeah. a person is. I went to the, into this marriage knowing who I was and being grounded in that and making a decision that I could feel so confident about. Mm -hmm. And I, I do say that, you know, getting married a little bit later, you do have, I think, more of that, more of knowing who you are, what you're willing to compromise and what you're not, what you stand for and what you won't, you know, I mean, I think that you have a better knowing of yourself mm -hmm. when you get married a little bit later, if that's the path that is right for you. So I'm so curious, how did you meet Kenny? We were set up on a blind date. Get out of here. And yes. Um, and this is a, actually an interesting story, but I think an important one in my book as well, because I always thought, okay, how am I going to meet my husband? Yeah. I'm working, I'm doing, you know, all of these things, but I just, I just sort of, I wrote down like one year after my birthday, I said, okay, you've always been so good at manifesting your professional goals. Why don't you take the same things you've done in your professional mm -hmm. life? and apply them to your personal life. So I took out a sheet of paper and I wrote down my goals for my personal life for the next year, for the first time ever. And I was very clear about what I wanted. And I said, you know, this is the year that I'm gonna meet my husband. It's gonna happen. Hmm. And I wrote that we were gonna get She married. proclaimed it, friends. She proclaimed it, this I is the year. I put yep. it out, I said, this is the year, it's time. You know, I, every, I have, there were things in my life that were actually just, just settled and, and clear mm -hmm. where I had, I had space for this person, emotional 
physical. Um, and that makes a big difference, right? You, you can't attract this person if you don't make space right. to include them in your life. And sometimes when you're really ambitious and you're achieving a lot, you, you literally don't have space to welcome this person in. Yes. So that's something to think about too, is like, are you making space for this person? Yes, in every way, emotionally, mm -hmm. uh, mentally, you cannot be a cynic about love and then attract it in your life at the same time. Mm -hmm. All of this work that needs to be done. I was at a point where I was there. I was there and it was, I was ready. And I had an honest conversation with God. I said, I think it's time. Yeah. And um, what happened is I went on living my life. It's not like I was out every day that year saying, okay, I see a man over there. Is that my husband? <laughs> where is he? Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't doing that. I was just living. So what happened? So I started doing things that I love to do more things that I love to do. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go back and take some singing lessons. I hadn't done that in a while. And <laughs> I said, baby, maybe I'll put out a Christmas single for the holiday. <laughs> do a song. So I contacted this music producer that I'd met on my show. And he's like a Grammy award winning producer. I didn't think he would actually work with me, but I thought, okay, he'll give me some advice. Sure. So he, um, he was like, oh, I think this sounds great. Why don't we meet and chat and talk about what you want to do? So I went to this lunch meeting. I had my little notepad like I normally do. And I'm taking all these notes. And well, it turns out that he is a good friend of Kenny. And when we were at this lunch, he said he knew within five minutes of sitting down with me, he was like, I have to introduce her to Kenny. She just reminds me so much of him. And he had been with hmm. Kenny a long time, like 15 years, but he didn't know me that well. So we went home to his wife and he said, you know, I met with this, with, with, with this young lady today. I think she's amazing. And, and I really want to introduce her to Kenny, but I don't want to overstep my boundaries because I don't know her on a personal level like that. And his wife looked at him and she said, well, what is it that you really think? How do you really feel? He said, honestly, I feel like they're perfect for each other. Aww. And two weeks later, he sends me this message. He sends Kenny a message. And he said, I just think that the two of you should meet. And we ended up having lunch and the rest is history. Oh, but I tell that. Story what a great because, story. I Thank you, Carrie. But I tell that story because had I not been doing and pursuing something that was really kind of outside of the box for me at the time. Yeah. I'm like a lawyer and doing all these other things, but then I decided to take these singing lessons. I mean, really think about it. If you didn't make that decision, you wouldn't have never met Kenny. I would, I, mean, not have met yeah. him. I would not have met him. And so I talk about this in the book, the importance of doing the things you love in life, because mm -hmm. as you go on and you do these things, you're going to open yourself up to meet people that you wouldn't normally meet. Yes. And you're going to, you're going to, it's going to be this diversity of friends and connections. And just in that moment of living life. So six months after I wrote that note that I was going to meet my husband, I had lunch with the man who would go on to become my husband. Oh, such a great story, a great story of intention. And like you said, living life, do you, because again, the more you explore, the more you travel, the more you go to the restaurants, the more you take the singing lessons, you just never know. You never know who you're going to meet. But I feel like for, I'll speak for myself, a lot of times, well, at the time too, I was a single mom, but like getting out of the house, getting out of my environment, doing things that bring you joy, like you just never know what's going to open up for you. And this is in so many areas of your life. So that's a great story. If, um, well, I know right now, everyone's like, how do I get my hands on this book, Faith? How do we get the book? Um, Sis Don't Settle is, and I have a copy of it here, right here in front of me. Well, I have the, the jacket. It is um, it is everywhere books are sold. This is my little title, Sis Don't Settle. And then it's How to Stay Smart in Matters of the Heart. Because it's all about it. smart decisions in love. Um, I, yes, have, I, I deal with so many amazing, ambitious, incredible women. And if you're like me, you are making all these strides in your career, but I was not making good decisions in love for a long time. And uh, so this, this was an important project for me, Carrie, because, um, you know, I just wanted to be able to share about my journey and these nuggets and pearls of wisdom that got me to where I am today, uh, very happily married to my husband. We just celebrated three years together, two years married. Has it been three years? Wow. 
yes, I know. Time flies. <laughs> it really does. And it's just been a uh, a wonderful story of it. You know, being okay waiting on the right time for you, mm -hmm. um, and everyone's story being so different, but embracing that. Yeah. And so it's everywhere books are sold. That's okay. where this don't settle is, and you can pick up a copy and let me know what you think about it. All right, all right, my friend, go get the book, Sis Don't Settle. And I have to ask, was your time on divorce court being a judge there? I'm sure there were some great stories and lessons from watching and being a part of that for as long as you were. Yes, and I incorporated some of those in the book as well um, because, it, so it's not just about my personal life, but it's pulling from stories from divorce court. My first job in New York, one of my first jobs was actually working in family court, doing divorces and custody cases and all of those. Oh things. man, so yeah. I pulled Can I imagine how fun that was? <laughs> yeah, I, well, that's when I decided I never wanted to practice family law yeah. right, full time because it was too emotional. Sure. It was, it was too emotional, especially for a young lawyer back then. So uh, yeah. that's when I decided to do I said, you know what, let me, let me go over here and do these stabbings and shootings. Right. That's <laughs> Something that's not quite as, as emotional as the family law. It was, it was really well, Faith, good. congratulations on all your success. I can't wait to see what you continue to produce. And, you know, I'm excited for ways that maybe we can continue to collaborate. I know we're talking about some things as well, but I just, I love your story. I love how you chose your passion, you know, over the quick win or, or that quick opportunity of, you know, fame and, how you just really show up for people and the heart in which you serve. If you don't follow Faith, make sure to do that. We'll put all the handles here um, in the notes. And you know, I always wrap up my shows with the question, what does inspired living mean to you? Hmm. Inspired living means to me, no matter what's going on in your life, being able to be in a place of peace. Mm. Uh, ships don't sink because of what's around them. Ships sink because of what gets in them. And so to be and live as an inspired person, Carrie, I think we always have to be in a place of protecting our inner peace. Mm -hmm. So beautifully said, Faith. Thank you so much for your time thank you for your incredible contribution again go get her book sis don't settle how to stay smart in matters of the heart you can get it anywhere books are sold and faith again thank you so much for your time today look forward to connecting more with you very soon thanks carrie i will talk to you soon all right bye bye it's been a real pleasure bye -bye. thank you bye You've just heard another uplifting episode of Inspired Living with Carrie Murphy, the podcast. I hope you loved it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. And if you'd like to know more about Inspired Living or to get your hands on many of our awesome free resources, such as the Be Studio Ready Guide, simply visit us at inspiredliving.tv forward slash podcast. Remember, your vision is your destiny, and we're here to help you bring it to life. Join me again next week for another extraordinary episode.